here I am standing underneath my locart tree. I think I told you the history of my locart tree in the last episode, but I never told you I call it the tree of life. Only because if you look inside my locart tree, I've got a lot of things happening. I have orchids that I've just thrown and supported it with the locart tree. Second thing, I have begonias there in the corner, again supported by the tree. And then I have all sorts of things happening here, but what I'd like to talk about are my air plants and they're all above the tree hanging. These air plants I had been given just a small bunch and over the years they have multiplied. So today I'd like to talk about the Talansia, my air plants. My name is Alice and I'm the Red Soil Gardener. The thing about Talansias, what I find so fascinating about them is their air plants. And because they're air plants, the most interesting thing about them is that they don't have a root structure and they don't rely on soil. What they do is that in their leaves, which is a bit furry, they act like a sponge, all these little hairs, and they soak in all the nutrients and the moisture from the air. During the day, this incredible plant, it actually receives the sunlight and during the night it transpires. But then also what happens is the underside at night is where the exchange of carbon dioxide and releasing the oxygen all happens. And the beauty about it is that it has taught itself how to conserve water. The leaves reflect the sun so you don't get it overheated. But what an interesting plant. So today what I have for you is I'm going to take you into my secret garden that I've been sort of working on the last one month and I'd like you to have a look and it's just full of Talansias. Welcome to my secret garden. About a month ago, I sort of looked at this empty space. It was a real mess before, but I thought my kitchen is here. In the morning, what would I like to look at? And I just decided, why don't I just get my air plants in there and my bromeliads so that in the end, when I'm washing dishes or in the kitchen cooking, I can see something really pretty and see how it develops. I've moved some of my plants like the bromeliads and my staghorn and my elephant ear. I've moved them here because I feel that they all look unusual. So this is where I have all my unusual plants. Why I love this spot is this is where my dogs hang out. This is where they have their houses inside. Sometimes in the afternoon they come and lie here because it does get quite shady. And the beauty about it is that I have this bush and I also have my bird a bowl there which I feed the birds every day. So this is where I put all my Talansias. This is similar to the one I have out there. And I bought it in and I put it in this old root structure just to make it look interesting. And the other one is this Talansia and it's flowering at the moment. The beauty about Talansias is that they flower only once in its lifetime. So I'm very grateful to have this flowering at this time. On this corner, here here is again I have the same one as I have there that is flowering I think this has finished its flowering season and this is a pink quill Talansia it also grows in soil so I put mine in soil but you can grow it in air
and again make your displays like what I've done here I just took a trunk of wood I just found it in the garden and I hung my Talanzia on that piece of wood you also have to remember is it doesn't like its root to get wet because Talanzias are not a parasitical that attaches itself to a bush and feeds off it it basically just feeds on air so the roots are not that important but don't get it um, wet because you may get rot so the thing about Talanzias is first of all remember it comes from a tropical perineum and so it grows in rainforests and basically it loves the humidity second thing is that you do get some that do grow in drought areas like on rocks and some of them can live for almost five to six months without actually requiring water so that's why I find this spot really good for them because basically I have trees and bushes so the area doesn't get direct sun it's got a lot sort of like a diffused light and this is really good for the air plants now they do get into situations like if you have them outside like I do during the the hot dry seasons where we're getting temperatures of about 29 during the day they do dry out there are two ways to look after your air plant first of all when you see the leaves curling or it goes slightly light gray you mist it and don't forget to mist the underside it's very important and the second thing what you do is that if it's really really thirsty and you see the curling and it looks really sort of as if it's drying out and light gray is you dunk it so let me show you how to dunk it soaking it come with me As I said is that there were two ways you either spray or you dunk it and let me show you what I've done is just submerge it in water like that and then you get this beautiful dark green once it's absorbed the water and then what you do is you can get a kitchen towel or just a normal dishcloth and then shake it and let it dry so basically that is dunking and I, I would leave it for about five hours yeah if you have nothing to do just leave it or if it's for example a lot of these air plants I just get a big bucket and I dunk it overnight and then dry them and then from there you carry on the other thing I'd like to discuss is again like what I said is you know there's so many ways to display some people actually do it in shells because in the end when these do flower they're really unusual so always try to find a way to display as I said at the end there I just took a piece of wood which was old and I just stuck everything on it but then the other way because it doesn't require any air so I thought let me just do a display like this and then what I'll do is throw a few of these babies in there I'll take these ones and you can display it inside so the first thing I would do is I'll just remove a bit of the rooting which is not really the root I'm just going to remove that and I'm going to just dunk it a bit because um, just to get a bit of and just shake it out and I'm going to place it in there I would have something like that and then display it on my coffee table or in a bookshelf or in the bathroom and that actually shows the beauty of the air plant So thank you for joining me on this channel. I hope you've learned something and also it's great to be sharing and I hope you do get a bit tantalized and go out and buy some air plants because actually there's not that much work to do and some of them do flower and it's so beautiful to watch the flowers grow. If you have any tips or you want to share anything we're on Instagram and on Facebook press that notification button and also like share my channel and don't forget to subscribe. Have a happy day. Thank you.